Hello there. Oh, that was aggressive. Hello there and welcome to my channel. I make vegan recipes that are always delicious, easy and affordable, and they're always gluten-free. If you are new to my channel, I'm Janelle. And if you aren't new, well, hello and thank you for coming back. So when people who don't know me very well find out that I'm both vegan and gluten-free, usually the response goes something along the lines of, oh my God, that must be like so hard. Or wow, you must not be able to eat like anything. <laughs> Actually, they couldn't be further from the truth. Now, being vegan certainly is a choice. However, for a lot of people, living a gluten-free lifestyle may not be a choice, but something that they have to abide by, whether it be from a gluten intolerance or even something as serious as celiac disease. I've been gluten-free for about 10 years and vegan for almost four. And as someone who loves to cook and is obsessed with food, I can pretty confidently say that eating a gluten-free and vegan diet has not and will not limit you in your abilities to make amazing, delicious, healthy foods that you will love and your whole family will love. Personally, I do try hard to avoid buying a lot of processed vegan and gluten-free alternatives to, you know, kind of everyday food items that people normally enjoy and rather try to recreate them as best I can with whole foods and try to make them a little healthier. But I understand that not everybody has the time or the patience to do that, including myself sometimes. I am totally the first one to admit. So I do try to keep that in mind when I'm creating recipes for you guys. So without further ado, I would love to show you guys some of the foods that I regularly make and eat all the time. Now these are recipes that I've already posted here on my YouTube channel and on my blog, but I wanted to just briefly walk you through some of them in kind of a short form clips to give you guys an idea of what gluten-free vegans eat every day. I'm one of them. I'm gonna have the links to each of those videos linked right here on the screen, or you can just head over to my video description after you finish watching the video and watch the videos that appeal to you most. With that being said, let's get started with breakfast. Smoothies always make for great grab and go meals that only take 10 minutes to whip up or you can even make them the night before for most recipes. They're an easy way to load up on fruits and veggies and to get those healthy macronutrients like vitamin C, iron, and magnesium. This recipe makes two, which is great for two people or for keeping in the fridge for tomorrow's breakfast as well. The big green smoothie is fabulous because it's heavy on the fruit flavors but still loaded with greens a win-win for those who aren't big on veggies. My hubby and I have some variation of this green smoothie nearly every day. And note how I said variation because you can really customize the ingredients to suit your personal preferences. If you've got a few extra minutes in the morning to make yourself a hearty breakfast, I definitely recommend my hippie quinoa bowl. Now, some of you might be like, uh, quinoa for breakfast? I was too at first, but then I remembered that quinoa is just another grain like oats. So what's the big deal? Turns out it's gosh darn delicious. And did I mention quinoa is gluten-free? Not to mention inexpensive. For those on a budget, a big bag of quinoa is usually much cheaper than gluten-free oats in the long run. So it's something to consider next time you're shopping. This recipe rocks because you can cook up a big pot of quinoa at the beginning of the week and use it for all your hippie quinoa bowls throughout the week. Hashtag time saver. These bowls can be eaten warm or cold. My preference is warm, but that tends to change with the seasons as well. And with any of your favorite nuts, seeds, nut or seed butters, seasonal fruit, and non-dairy milks, definitely check out the recipe if this kind of breakfast tickles your fancy. If your appetite isn't huge in the mornings, then making yourself some fancy toasts just might be your thing. Toast is a really underrated breakfast. Now, it's true that bread on its own won't fill you up much, but load it up with nuts, nut and seed butters, and fruits and veggies, and we're talking about something else entirely. There's so many incredible gluten-free and vegan breads out there now that did not exist when I first started eliminating gluten, and I'm sure you're bound to find one that you love. A few of my favorite toasts with the most are everything bagel toast, tomato and basil avocado toast, sunflower butter and jam toast, and PB and banana toast. That's a lot of time saying toast. If this feels like your jam, <laughs> see what I did there. Definitely take a peek at the recipe video. If you're a meal prepper, then this is the breakfast for you. These quinoa oat breakfast bars are delicious, nutritious, and filling, and are really easy to whip up for a make-ahead grab-and-go breakfast. Heck, they're fantastic just as a healthy anytime snack. 
Enjoyable both warm and cold, these keep well in the fridge for up to a week, and many of the ingredients can be tweaked to your own personal preferences, or what you happen to have on hand. Give them a try in either strawberry banana, carrot cake, or apple cinnamon. I promise once you try them, you'll want to make them every week. So it's the weekend, you're in your jammies, and you're feeling like a happy stack of pancakes. Well, I got you covered. In case you didn't know, you can make pancake batter in your blender, y'all. Perhaps one of my favorite foods of all time, pancakes are basically my childhood in a stack. Fluffy, crispy, tender, and friggin' delicious, these vegan and gluten-free banana blender pancakes require only eight simple ingredients and take the same amount of cook time as conventional pancakes. If you're thinking about going gluten-free and or vegan and are panicking about what foods you might not be able to eat anymore, I'm here to assure you that pancakes will definitely not be one of them. Tofu egg salad? You might be scratching your head at this one if you're new to eating plant-based, but trust me when I say this tastes uncannily like eggs. If you've never heard of black salt or kala namak, it's an Indian salt that tastes like eggs. No joke. It has a slightly sulfuric tang that when added to foods gives them an incredible eggy taste. And paired with the texture of tofu, you've got a final product that has a very similar taste and mouthfeel to egg salad. This recipe is hearty, packed full of plant-based protein, and only requires eight ingredients in under 15 minutes to whip up. I like eating it on its own, but you can totally add it to sandwiches, on top of a bed of greens, or simply with some crackers. Great for meal prep, this tofu egg salad can last for up to five days in the fridge, aka your whole work week. So go ahead and make yourself a batch. You will be glad you did. Pesto happens to be one of my favorite foods. Why? Because it can be used in a multitude of yummy ways, including in the next recipe I'm going to show you. But before that, I gotta tell you that making pesto is a great way to use up leftover wilting herbs, especially basil, and other greens like kale or spinach. If you aren't feeling ready for those dark leafy greens quite yet, I'd still say give this a go because you can easily mask the taste with copious amounts of garlic, olive oil, lemon juice, and nuts or seeds. You can add pesto to sandwiches, eat it with crackers and chopped veggies, or use as a simple pasta sauce, which is literally the best, okay? Which brings me to my next well-loved lunch recipe. I love making quinoa bean salad with pesto, leftover cooked quinoa, and those veggies waiting to die inside my fridge. Packed with protein, flavor, and a variety of textures, the salad comes together in one bowl and uses cheap and simple ingredients. Another make-ahead meal for all you meal preppers, this salad will keep in the fridge for up to five days. If you happen to have a few extra minutes to throw some elbows in your kitchen at lunchtime, fajita pasta might just be your new go-to comfort food. It's definitely one of mine. Fajitas and pasta together is a beautiful marriage of spice, sauteed veggies, and creamy pasta. I could honestly shed a tear over it. It's a total flavor bomb that has the audacity to only take 20 minutes to make. This spicy hug in a bowl is packed with protein, especially if you use legume pasta like chickpea or lentil, and is a great recovery meal if you happen to work out before lunch. Another quick and comforting meal that I make all the time, this is such a great plant-based alternative to butter chicken. The sauce, which is always the best part of any meal in my opinion, incorporates delicious traditional Indian spices like cumin, coriander, garam masala, chili powder, and loads of ginger and garlic. This one pot meal comes together quickly and cheaply thanks in part to pantry staples like canned chickpeas and tomatoes and extra firm tofu. Served on top of basmati rice, butter chickpeas is the vegan gluten-free comfort food you never know you needed or could have in the first place. So it turns out that warm salads are a thing and a very delicious thing, I might add. If you have some autumn root veggies, dark leafy greens, and a few pantry staples and a few extra minutes to spare, you can make this roasted carrot, beet, and Brussels salad. Quite a mouthful, figuratively and literally. Requiring just a little extra time to ensure the root veggies are cooked thoroughly, the salad is fresh and crisp, yet warm and cozy at the same time. The combined textures of hearty root veggies, crisp kale, chewy dried cranberries, and crunchy toasted pumpkin seeds makes the salad a textural eater's dream bowl. Did I mention balsamic glaze? Yum. I really do love this salad, and I think you will too. 
This buttery sage fettuccine is truly the perfect marriage of fresh summer flavors and creamy, savory indulgence. The addition of soy curls, one of my favorite sources of plant-based protein, helps to make this a really filling meal. Seriously, what's not to love about garlic, sage, asparagus, and fresh garden peas wrapped up in a warm, lemony, buttery hug? Oh, that's right, nothing. This is another quick under 30 minute meal that I regularly keep on the rotation all year round. And you should too. Remember that viral TikTok baked feta pasta that broke the internet? Well, turns out you can make it vegan and gluten free, baby. Us gluten free vegans aren't missing out on anything, okay? There's definitely a reason it went viral and why I make it so often. One, it's insanely good. And two, it's insanely easy to make. I love that I can just dump all my ingredients into a baking dish, pop it in the oven, and once done, just stir in some cooked gluten-free pasta. If you have made it this far into the video, you are the real MVP. I definitely hope that this has answered the question, what do gluten-free vegans eat? And if it has, maybe you've been inspired to go ahead and try making yourself some easy vegan and gluten-free meals. If it has, definitely go ahead and hit that like button. I also hope that if you've been feeling a little bit worried about transitioning into a gluten-free and vegan diet and that it's seemed very daunting, I hope that now it doesn't seem that way and that maybe you're even excited and that maybe you're not so scared about it anymore. Also, if you are new to the vegan and or gluten-free game, you'll definitely want to check out my last two videos I've uploaded, one being my vegan pantry essentials and two, my gluten-free pantry essentials. These videos cover all of my top essentials that I keep both in my fridge and pantry, stuff that I use all the time that I cannot live without, I also tell you what products to get and which ones to avoid, as well as offer you guys some great tips and recipe ideas. Lastly, I really do just wanna thank you again for sticking with me this far into the video. As a new content creator here on YouTube, it is so important for me to show the YouTube algorithm that people are interested in my content. And one way to do that is by gaining more subscribers like you awesome person. So if you have found value in this video today, I would so appreciate if you like this video and hit that subscribe button. I really do have so much love for you guys and I hope you guys have a fabulous day and I will definitely be seeing you in a future video. Bye.